Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking, and today I'm going to do a little comparison video. Um, as always, if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be awesome. Also, you can find me on Instagram. I'm at Steve Halleck, S-T-E-V-E-H-A-L-L-O-C-K. Um, I just made my Instagram public, so I post a lot of cool watch shots there and stuff for sale and things like that. Um, anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, so today I have two watches. Uh, one from Glaciuta Original and one from Langa. Um, for those who don't know, both of these companies um, are headquartered in a small German city called Glaciuta. Um, it is just sort of outside of Dresden, and they're kind of right down the street from each other. Um, Langa is now owned by Richemont, and Glaciuta uh, Original is now owned by Swatch Group, um, but they both produce their watches there in Glaciuta, and they're both uh, just amazing high-end brands. Obviously, Langa is um, sort of considered at the very, very tip-tip top of the industry, and Glaciuta is probably one of Swatch's greatest brands, but the price points are um, a little bit less than uh, Langa watches. So um, let's look at both of them. On face, they're, they're kind of similar watches design-wise, um, and I think that is due to the popularity of the Longa One. So let's start here. This is called the Longa One. And uh, Longa is a brand, uh, I, I hope I get my history right. Um, they were around in Germany, and then in the uh, during World War II, uh, their factories basically got destroyed, and they were uh, then subsequently, I think, I think maybe co-opted by, by the communists and their factories taken over and they basically stopped production. And then in the 90s, the brand was revived and this was the watch that they came out with. Um, I, so that's why it's called the Longa One. And while it looks like a really sort of classic watch, at the time, this design was actually considered very um, sort of forward-thinking design. You have uh, multiple indicators. You've got the time, you've got seconds, you've got a power reserve, and you've got a large uh, date. And none of them overlap in any way. So they're all on the dial uh, in their own planes, basically. Um, and that was never, no design like that had ever been made. So it was, uh, it was sort of, well, it, it, it's kind of funny to think that uh, you know, 15, 18 years later, whatever, this is now considered sort of plain, uh, where at the time people were sort of shocked by it. Um, so this particular version is in platinum. People call this the stealth. They made two platinum models, uh, serial production models, one with a silver dial that people called the stealth and one with the black dial that people called the Darth, uh, like Darth Vader. Um, so this is the stealth model in platinum with the silver hands, you know, everything sort of silvered out, which is hence the stealth name. Um, on the back, uh, you've got the typical beautiful Langa movement, the gold chatons uh, that the rubies sit in. Uh, chatons are like these um, little kind of cups, basically, that ruby pivots are set into. Um, and the blued screws. Um, this plate is called a three-quarter plate. And it's very traditional in uh, German watchmaking. It kind of stabilizes the movement, and it's a very uh, high-end way to make a movement. So you have a, the typical Langa three-quarter plate. And um, the movement's made out of German silver, which is a material that they, uh, I believe, always work with, or at least almost always work with. And it's a very high-end um, alloy to make uh, movements out of. Uh, you have the engraved... Balance cock, I think again, every Longa has a hand engraved balance cock and each one is unique to the person who engraves it. So uh, I, I, when you go to the factory, uh, most of the time they can look at the balance cock of your watch and they know who actually made the watch, which is pretty cool. Um, but you see things like the, the incredible black polish there and just the overall finish of the movement and the case is is just super top notch and the platinum is is heavy although it's a small you know it's uh it's not a large watch i think it's 39 millimeters or 38 um and it's not thick so it, it's decent proportions but it's very heavy for a watch of that size 
um, and this one comes on a tang buckle. They make a platinum uh, deployant buckle as well. I don't find it to be very comfortable because it's one of the ones that sort of goes all the way up the strap and on my wrist it digs in. It's also tremendously expensive. I think the deployant buckle itself is like six grand or something like that. Um, so functionally, I guess the only other thing to go over on this is um, it has a, a really long power reserve um, and each of these dots marks a day. So you have one, two, three, four, I think it's a five day power reserve. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's it. Um, and uh, the date wheel uh, changes with this pusher here. It doesn't change through the crown. So if you want to change the date, you push and your date changes. So that's the longa. Let's take a look at the glissuta. Um, so this one obviously is in rose gold. This is an older model um, that they made uh, about the same time that Longa 1 was being made, a little bit later. But they obviously took some of the styling cues of that watch. You've got the power reserve over here, you've got the large date, um, and uh, but on this one you have the seconds and the time overlapping, so it changes that design aspect a bit. Um, the Glissuta outsized date I actually like more than the Longa. Um, if you take a look here again, because of the windows on the longer one, um, let's go to like a two digit date. Um, you can tell, especially in person, that these are on two different planes. The tens digit is higher than the um, ones digit, and it's not, it's not like bothersome but I just don't like it quite as much as this execution of a big date where they're like interlocking wheels basically and they're on the same plane and it's just a little bit more even. Um, so I really like that. I like the gold hands on this one. They, they stand out a lot. Um, and then this one comes on a deployant buckle, which is cool, but also check it out. This is automatic. So it still has the, the three quarter plate, which is you know the traditional German way of doing it but it's automatic, it's got an automatic rotor. Um, also has this engraved balance cock, but you can see the overall finish of the movement is just not quite as good. You don't have gold chatons, um, well, anywhere. You've got the rubies here under the automatic winding. Um, the polish isn't quite as good. The, um, you know, just overall fit and finish of it is not quite as good. It's still amazing and really better than anyone needs in a watch. Um, but you can tell uh, when the two are next to each other that the Longa is just a more expensive watch and a nicer watch. Um, that being said, I think these are really incredible value. Uh, they're, they're undervalued in the market and you know while this Longa might be worth uh, 20 high 20s or mid, mid to high 20s, um, uh, even in gold, it's worth sort of in the low 20s, I believe, right now. Uh, this watch in gold, you're going to find at, at 10 grand or less. So um, I think when you look at it like that, the Glissuta really provides a lot of value. But it definitely, uh, when you hold the two of them next to each other, it, it, it's just not quite as nice of a watch. So um, these are two of sort of the best that, that Germany has to offer in dress watches. Let me throw them on the wrist quickly so you can see. Um, here's the Longa 1. Really nice size, nice proportions. Uh, it's going to look good on, on almost any wrist. And you can see the stealthiness of it. And then the Glissuta. Also great size. Really nice looking watch. Um, if you saw this on somebody's wrist, you would you would know they have a very nice watch and they have good taste. Um, so that's that's these two, and uh, I don't know what else to say about them. They're nice watches. If you want one, <laughs> uh, I I can suggest buying either of these watches. They're they're both uh, excellent and they're gonna um, they're gonna hold their value and and be nice pieces to have for a while. So I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.